Teardown time. This is the DeWalt DW9118 battery charger for my electric drill. Came up to my workshop this morning and uh, I was hoping to recharge the battery. And the charger no longer seems to work at all. So I'm going to tear it apart and uh, see it was built and uh, see if I can sort down the fault. So there's a single circuit board inside the enclosure. It has three whole components on one side. Looks like a smattering of resistors on the other side. One layer of copper on the board. Uh, looks like a pretty economic assembly. Uh, the first fault on the board was pretty obvious. There was a fuse here. Let me just insert the picture of it. Uh, it had opened up, so uh, probably a short condition has occurred on the circuit board. Uh, as a minor bit of interest, if you crack open the fuse, you can pour out some contents in it. It's more than, more than just a wire. Uh, there's some silica in the middle. I believe this is uh, put in with the fuse, so if the uh, little wire opens up only slightly, you don't get an air arc fault. The uh, silica prevents that from occurring, so kind of a bit of a secret life of a fuse. Uh, let's come back to the assembly here uh, and uh, take a look at the other problems. Uh, there was a diode here. Uh, it had uh, shorted up in the diode uh, is a uh, complete dead short. MOSFET here, same thing. So whatever happened to the assembly, it's probably been pretty dramatic and this thing's probably uh, beyond economic repair. You can certainly buy uh, replacements uh, fairly inexpensively. So uh, rather than being a repair video, which I thought this was originally going to be, it turns into sort of a teardown video. Looking at this uh, white material here, I think this has been put on the board uh, to prevent uh, parts from falling off during shock events. Uh, and it shows a couple of interesting problems, one uh, with their choice of material. Um, this is used in my workshop, do a lot of woodworking, and I'll insert a picture here. You can see a lot of uh, wood is, uh, dust is collected on the uh, plastic uh, adhesive and uh, causing uh, this resistor then to warm it up and uh, crisp it. Uh, sort of a side effect. Uh, I wonder if they thought about when they actually uh, chose this material. Uh, the other one, of course, is a big theme I've seen a lot, is that uh, even though the assembly might be good, it's often let down by uh, poor execution. Uh, look at this inductor here, and uh, I mean, this is another picture would be a bit blurry in the video otherwise. Uh, but basically this uh, epoxy, I believe, is supposed to hold this uh, part on. What's happened is it's, uh, it's just been swiped around by a finger or something, a, a nozzle, and just the barest, the whiff of uh, adhesive uh, t uh, holding the choke down. So um, often it looks like in high volume manufacturing, you seem to get let down by really just uh, what appears pretty sloppy uh, assembly work. Um, interesting bits of industrial archaeology. Uh, the power supply is made by a company called Delta. Definitely a good old name uh, in power supply designs. Uh, they obviously farm the design out. If you look at this uh, controller here, it's a microcontroller from the uh, Zilog company. Shows also some interesting things about uh, corporate history. Um, it's noted to be uh, copyright by Black & Decker. Uh, Black & Decker, of course, owns the DeWalt name. They bought them in the 1960s. And then, of course, even Black & Decker eventually got bought by Stanley, I think, a few years ago. So um, you get that big sweep of corporate history. The copyright, though, is interesting, uh, 1999. But if I go over to the actual circuit board here, there's a date of assembly. It was the uh, 2010, 39th week. Uh, that's about right. I probably bought this either late 2010 or 2011. How about a five-year life before it failed? So, you know, clearly have a design here. It's been going for a, a good long time if the copyright date here is uh, being read correctly. Let's, um, let's pop this open, actually. Let's see what this uh, microcontroller looks like. So here's the little chunk of silicon that came out of that uh, package that was on the circuit board. Let me just put it uh, into my... Uh, metallurgical microscope here and uh, insert some photos. They're really quite interesting. So here's the uh, photograph of the overall die. Uh, just gorgeous, of course. Uh, one nice thing about these older process nodes, you can see the individual transistors pretty easily under uh, some pretty modest uh, magnification. Uh, let's zoom into some marks to just confirm what we're looking at. Uh, here's the mass copyright from uh, Zilog uh, way back in 1980, almost 40 years ago. Uh, the newest bit of technology is die is from 96. That's uh, pushing, of course, 20 years old. Uh, so we're definitely not looking at uh, the newest controller on the block, uh, but that's fine because it does a pretty good job for what they're asking for it. Uh, here's the mark showing what it is, an 86C04. Let me just uh, pop up the top of the data sheet for that. Uh, it's a, obviously a really modest uh, microcontroller. Uh, it has 125 bytes of RAM and one kilobyte of ROM. So obviously a pretty modest processor. But then again, of course, all it's doing is measuring uh, the battery voltage undoubtedly. And turning the charger on or off so don't need a lot of compute power for that doesn't look like there's any even any analog or digital converters on the uh, uh, die it's a pretty straightforward digital uh, product so uh, let's zoom back out to the major uh, functions on the block uh, we can obviously see the ram on the 
top there and the ROM on the bottom side, the uh, regular arrays. Uh, in the middle, of course, is the actual microprocessor, the register file, and all the steering logic. Uh, very bottom there, those two pads I suspect are probably for the oscillator. And the pads on the left and right are the uh, I.O. Uh, I.O. that are available for the controller. Very modest amount of I.O. resources in this one. So, there you go. Another really neat die photograph. Uh, as always, I'll throw up on the description of this video where you can find the full uh, JPEG if you want to download it and take a closer look at the die. So the microcontroller certainly was quite interesting. Let's just take a look at the topology. The AC input was here. These little tangs here are the DC output that uh, went to the battery pack. Supported a battery between uh, 7 and 14 volts, I believe. Uh, these two parts here are for conducted emissions. This is uh, an inductor and a capacitor. They prevent uh, noise being pushed back into the power supply. Large series of diodes. Um, I speculate that uh, four of these are a full wave uh, bridge rectifier that rolls around this way. And then two roll up here into some circuitry, which I believe is just for the microprocessor. Uh, two very large looking resistors. Uh, there's a, a small semiconductor here, and I thought it might be a voltage regulator, but it's actually just a 2N3904 NPN transistor. So uh, I presume it's a low voltage power supply that powered up the little controller. Uh, on this side here, here's a very large inductor. I presume it's a switching power supply with a MOSFET switching it. And then this diode, which has been cut off the board, was providing the rectification that drove it uh, onto the uh, battery pack. Well, there you go. Uh, that is uh, the insides of my uh, old DeWalt uh, charger. And it looks like it's going to be hitting the recycling bin, and uh, I'm going to go off and buy myself something new.